Ultraviolet light is good for you, particularly if you have lots of eumelanin in your eyes, skin, etc. Let's get into it. First things first, what is ultraviolet light? Ultraviolet light refers to the uh, around about 5% of the light that comes from the sun is ultraviolet light. And it's called ultraviolet because it's beyond violet. So you've got the visible portion of the, the solar spectrum, which is the energy that comes from the sun to the Earth's surface. And on the, on the edge of that is violet. And then beyond violet, that's what ultraviolet means, beyond violet. And uh, that's ultraviolet light. It's light that's be be um, between the wavelengths of 200 and 400 nanometers. And that ultraviolet light is broken down into, th into three sub portions. You've got ultraviolet A, which is 320 to 400 nanometers wavelength. Then you've got ultraviolet B, which are the electromagnetic waves, which, which have a length of between 290 and 320 nanometers. And then you've got ultraviolet C, which is 200, 200 to 290 nanometers, but that doesn't come to the surface of the Earth. It's mostly absorbed by the atmosphere. Light of different wavelengths penetrates to different depths in our skin. So you'll see that out, uh, infrared light penetrates way, way, way deep through the skin all the way down. We'll, we'll talk about infrared more in future podcasts, but I want to focus on ultraviolet here. You'll see that ultraviolet C penetrates just a little bit into the epidermis, but again, it's not so relevant because we don't get much ultraviolet C from the sun because it's absorbed by the atmosphere. Ultraviolet B, you'll see, penetrates down all the way through the epidermis, and ultraviolet A penetrates right down into the dermis. That's ultraviolet light, and that's how far it goes into our body. What does it do? Well, let me talk about some of the good things that ultraviolet light does. First of all, ultraviolet light has been shown to trigger the production of nitric oxide in our bodies. What is nitric oxide, you might be asking. Nit nitric oxide is not nitrous oxide, okay? This is a different thing. Nitric oxide is a molecule, a very simple molecule that uh, exists in, in, in large volume in our bodies. And this molecule is critically, critically important, particularly for our cardiovascular system, for our blood vessels. Because as you'll see from these the, all these different uh, parts of the body, the effects that it has on all, all, all these different parts of the body, whether it be the immune system, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, nervous system, gastrointestinal system, all of these, all of these systems are affected by nitric oxide primarily because nitric oxide helps to relax our blood vessels. It relaxes our blood vessels. And when it relaxes our blood vessels, it means that blood is able to flow more easily and more freely to the different parts of the body. And guys, if blood doesn't flow properly to parts of your body like your brain, then you, we're gonna die. So n having, having abundant amounts of nitric oxide is absolutely crucial for our, our bodies, for our, for, our, for our immune system, cardiovascular system, and so on and so forth. Even sexual performers, interestingly, it's been shown that that vasodilation that the nitric oxide triggers, i.e. that relaxation of the, va the, 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 the blood vessels, actually leads to it leads to better sexual performance and better sex because you know obviously our sexual organs are fueled by blood and so nitric oxide helps blood to flow more freely to our sex organs and thus results in better sexual performance and enjoyment so so what's all this got to do with uh, ultraviolet radiation again well ultraviolet radiation ultraviolet light has been shown to catalyze trigger the production of nitric oxide in our skin You'll see from this image here from a 27, 2021 study that ultraviolet B and ultraviolet A and blue light all have been shown to uh, trigger, start the process in our skin to create nitric oxide. There's even some, this paper that I'm, I'm looking at here also, also suggests or proposes that red light and near infrared light both also uh, trigger the production of nitric oxide. So this is one of the reasons why, as we'll talk about in a future podcast, sun exposure is negatively correlated with blood pressure, meaning that the more sun exposure you have, the lower our blood pressure is, and the less sun exposure you have, the higher your, your blood pressure is. And the, 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 known, the known pathway for that so far that we know of is, is the shining of ultraviolet light onto our skin 
catalyzes and triggers the process of nitric oxide production. So hugely important. Ultraviolet radiation also triggers the production of vitamin D, which you probably hopefully know already. Vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin, or should more accurately be called the sunshine hormone, because it's more of a hormone. Is is called that because when we, when our bodies receive ultraviolet light, and that's ultraviolet B specifically, so light within the two hundred ninety to three hundred and twenty nanometer wavelength portion, that triggers the that kickstarts the, the 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 cascade, or which ends up in vitamin D being produced. So we've got this thing called seven D hydrocholesterol that that is floating about in our epidermis, that. One under the influence of ultraviolet B radiation only, significantly only, that is then catalyzed or, or photolyzed into pre-vitamin D3, and then the heat then transforms that into vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol. And then that uh, cholecalciferol is bioactive. That has some functions in and of itself, but it also is then transported to, the, the most of it is transported to our liver, uh, where it's turned into calcium calcidiol or calcifediol, and then it's it's transferred to the kidney where it's transformed into the what's known as the bioactive form of vitamin D3, which is uh, which is calcitriol. So vitamin D3, as you know, essential for our bone health, but also essential for our, for our immune system. And there are many other, when you look at people who have low vitamin D, usually they have very poor health outcomes in various, you know, their respiratory health is poorer, their immune health is poorer, their cardiovascular health is poorer, their uh, gastrointestinal health is poorer. Showing that there is a, a very, you know, vitamin D is a, is very important to all of these uh, uh, functions. Although, as has been shown, when you supplement people with vitamin D, it doesn't really do much. It's, you know, there's been massive randomized control trials to try and show that vitamin D supplementation can fix all of these problems, but actually it doesn't, it has not been shown. And I think the reason for that, more and more people are, are, are pointing out, the reason for this is that vitamin D3 is not really the thing that is, uh, you know, that is causing all of those functions to, to happen properly per se, rather it's sunlight, it's ultraviolet radiation, it's visible light, it's infrared light that is causing it. So that's why you have the correlations between exposure to sunlight and better health. The more exposure to sunlight you have, generally speaking, the better the health outcomes. But if you're, you know, if you're, if you're smart, you're, you will be aware of the fact that ultraviolet light is also a cause of um, negative outcomes. As you can see from this slide here, ultraviolet A, UVA light, it causes premature aging, indirect DNA damage, oxidative stress, which we discussed last week, and skin cancer. UVB light causes sunburn, inflammation, direct DNA damage, eye damage, and skin cancer. So what's the deal here? What's going on here? Well, let's very quickly, let's talk about the what's going on here when these ultraviolet uh, photons photon is just the the a packet of energy that's coming from the from from light energy a packet of light energy called photons so when these photons hit our skin they penetrate down and they they go into the they they affect keratinocytes and melanocytes and fibroblasts focusing specifically on these melanocytes melanocytes are the cells that create melanin right hence melanocytes in our skin but what happens is that if these are undefended and they are the ultraviolet light goes into them, they can they it can you know damage them you know cause oxidative damage and it can damage the DNA within those melanocytes. And if it can if it does that, it can it can affect the behavior of these melanocytes, causing them to create melanin uncontrollably. And this is where you end up with what's called a melanoma. The most serious uh, form of skin cancer is melanoma. Melanoma, it's in the name, mela, you know, darkness. Melanoma exists or was caused when melanocytes just cre keep cre producing too much melanin. And those melanomas can, of course, become mag mag malignant, thus causing, you know, very serious problems. So, yeah, in, that, in this instance, ultraviolet light can cause problems. However, I mentioned at the top of the video that ultraviolet light is good for you, particularly if you have lots of U melanin in your skin. And this image here is a good overview of this. You'll see 
there's a melanocyte there, a melanocyte there. It's a big cell. It kind of looks like some kind of tree or octopus or something. I don't know. But you'll see those melanocytes uh, are, are putting out these things called melanosomes. Melanosomes are where melanin is contained. And what, what happens is that melanocytes then distribute those melanosomes to go off into the keratinous, keratinocytes and surround the nuclei of these cells. These, this here is a nucleus of the cell. And you see the, the, mel the melanosomes there are trying to surround that cell nucleus in order to, pr to protect it from damage because melanin can absorb UV radiation and it can, uh, it can pre prevent it from going into the cell of the nucleus and causing damage. Here you've got this, the skin types, these Fitzpatrick skin types. So on the left-hand side is very light skin. You'll see that uh, the amount of melanin that's being uh, distributed to the keratinocytes in light skin is very low. But then you go over to very dark skin. I have very dark skin. And you'll see, look at the amount of melanosomes which are being distributed around the, the nuclear, nuclei of these keratinocytes. It's much more, isn't it? Much thicker... Uh, would you call it much much thicker blanket of melanoso melanosomes around those cells, and down here toward the bottom of this, the image here, you'll see that the melanosomes that are put out by dark skin are big, fat, you know, big, big, strong uh, granules, if you like, of melanin inside them. Whereas the melanosomes from light skin, they have smaller, smaller melanosomes, smaller granules of melanin within the melanosomes. So what that means is that if you have dark skin, you are much, 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 you are well protected from any, from ultraviolet radiation causing any damage to your cells in your skin. Now, melanin, this is the absorption spectra. The red, the red part here is the solar spectrum. And you'll see here that this black line is the absorption spectra of melanin, eumelanin. And you'll see that eumelanin absorbs very strongly in the ultraviolet. So it's like it's been designed to absorb that ultraviolet radiation. Well, what does it do? Well, ultraviolet, uh, melanin rather absorbs ultraviolet and visible light and dissipates that light energy in the form of uh, heat. And it puts that heat out. And as a result, it does mean that darker skinned people can keep cooler in the, in the sun, in heat, hot weather. Melanin is also a free radical scavenger. We spoke last week about how uh, certain molecules and uh, can actually basically consume free radicals, preventing them from causing any damage. Melanin is one of those. Melanin also binds to metals and drugs. Uh, neuromelanin in particular does that. It combines to things like iron in the brain, preventing the iron from causing damage. And it's also a semiconductor, but we're not going to go into that in, the, in this video here. But an important point to, to make is that eumelanin and pheomelanin are the two types of melanin created in our skin. All those positive things I've talked about with regard to melanin apply to eumelanin. You know, it's an antioxidant and it absorbs UV light. Pheomelanin is, is a pro-oxidant, meaning that it can actually trigger oxidative damage. And it's also phototoxic. And what that means is that lighter skinned people, the, the, you have to look at this image yourself in your own time. But lighter skinned people are basically are, are, have a much higher risk of melanomas. They are much more sensitive to ultraviolet light. They have much less eumelanin. Uh, they're much less able to tan. They're hardly able to tan. And uh, they're not able, they're much less able to, to repair the damage, DNA damage that's done by uh, uh, ultraviolet radiation. And then you go all the way to the other side of the spectrum. Dark skinned people, including, you know, people like me, many Africans, we never, we never burn, hardly ever burn. We've got loads of melanin in our skin, it takes a load more ultraviolet light to cause any kind of issues for us. And also we tan quicker and we're able to repair DNA damage. And as a result, that's why the rates of breast cancer amongst black people in the United States and other, other parts of the world are much, much lower, minuscule, basically non-existent in comparison to those amongst lighter skinned people, such as white people. So that, in a nutshell, is why I say that ultraviolet light is good for you on the whole, particularly if you have high amounts of melanin in your eyes, skin, and so forth.